for listening to Uncle Sam's Soccer Podcast, keeping you up to date with the latest in American soccer. And don't forget to subscribe. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Uncle Sam's Soccer Podcast. My name is Steven Jodorand. Joining me today, as always, is Armand Kafai and Jake Watroba. Now, on today's episode, listeners, no, we are not talking about the U.S. men's national team and a disaster performance in Canada against the Canadians. We'll talk about that on a future episode. But today, we continue our MLS playoffs preview. We talk about the Eastern Conference. Check out the last episode where we talk about the Western Conference. Listeners, if you haven't done so, hit that subscribe button. Follow us at Unc Sam Soccer Pod and leave us a five star review. And guys, I'm very, very worried about asking you to answer this question. But can we try to do this in under 90 seconds? A quick take on the U.S. men's national team. Is it possible? Can we do it? No, no, please. Can you say burn it down? Burn it all down. That's my take. Burn it down. Okay. And here's my take. Burhalter out. Wow. All right. There you go. Hey, listeners. Wait, 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 wait. I want a sub question of the day before we ask the real question of the day. <laughs> sub listeners, okay. I'm going to the Minnesota United playoff match this Sunday. Should I bring a Burhalter out sign? Let us know at Unc Sam Soccer Pod. Jake, do or, it. Do it. Please. You would Petrola. be a legend. Let me know. You would be a legend. It would be like the Wenger out sign. Please. Listeners. At every sporting event you go, if you have strong feelings about Greg Berhalter and his job as the man in charge of your national team, please bring a sign. I would love that. Jake, great idea. Just make sure there's an iron front symbol on it. Oh, oh wait, no, those, can't, I, those, are, those are cool now. We're, those are fine. Oh, oh okay, those. they're cool. Okay, I so should... make sure it has four of those. <laughs> what? <laughs> Make sure it's plastered with iron front symbol, please. Okay. Okay. <laughs> anyway, right. back on track. We've done this two straight episodes where we just, you know, fall off the the, the railroad tracks here. The St. John Tommies versus the St. John Johnnies or whatever it's called. Anyway, let's just go back. Listen to last episode where we do talk about the Tommies and the Johnnies. Quite fascinating story there. But guys... Here's the real question of the day. How important is it for the league to have a good playoffs? Now, listeners, join the conversation at Unc Sam Soccer Pod. And Armand, Jake, I think this season, it's not that important. Okay. Uh, love to hear your take here because, because to me, it doesn't make any sense why it would be an open okay thing for the playoffs to just be a total dud for the league. So so explain your stance here. I want to know where you're coming from. Jake, it's a simple reason why a successful playoffs is not that important for the league this year. It's the fact the league gr- continues to grow. There are rumors of Lionel Messi coming to Major League Soccer. There's buzz with the expansion teams. This is the first time we're seeing this new format with the playoffs, so changes could potentially come out of it. I think it's a trial wear, uh, a trial run. I, I don't know, Stephen. A niche league. I think, I think they need a big postseason. I think they need a Zlatan here's, here's what they or a need. Vela or here's somebody to need. show out. They need teams, big teams, to make the final. That's what they need. So they need an LAFC in Atlanta matchup. Is that what you're saying? Yes. They they need a, a Ibra in the, the conference finals or making the finals versus honestly, who do you think are the biggest? We're talking about the Eastern conference. We kind of know the superstars in the West, but Atlanta. And then who, who's the second biggest draw in the Eastern conference? Is it Toronto? I don't Armand, know. I'll, let, I'll let you take that one. I mean, I guess you have to say DC and Wayne Rooney, right? Like does NYCFC like, really not the, carry it's the not name? The revs. Well, it's not the revs. But is I'll it, tell you. I'll it, tell you who the who the big club is. The, the second biggest club in the East after Atlanta United, starting next year, will be Miami, Inter Miami. 
Okay, I don't we're not talking year. about next year. We're talk- I don't care. I'm telling Who? you, there is no number two. There is no number two. It's Atlanta and then a bunch of crap. Jake, Jake, we're is. talking about MLS Cup 2019. Behind yeah, Atlanta yeah. United, which no team draws the biggest TV audience? It's probably DC United or Toronto. Philadelphia, nobody could name you any superstars they have to the average fan. But Toronto FC, you got the Americans there. You got Wayne Rooney in America's capital. Red Bulls, you're missing a superstar. Revs, you're missing a superstar. NYCFC, good team. Yes, they're the, the one seed. But again, you're missing that massive superstar. No, I mean, I think you're right. There is like a massive superstar missing. I just, I mean, you know what? I mean, I guess it has to be Rooney, but I'm kind of like forced to pick a number two or else I'd kind of start with Jake and say there was no one. Yeah, well, Jake takes the. It's easy a bunch way of duds. Out. It's a bunch of duds. After D- after Atlanta, it's a bunch of duds. I guess you. I mean, it felt like it was Orlando City when they first broke on the scene with Kaku or Kaka, not Kaku. Sorry, uh, when they had Kaka. But yeah, it, it feels well, like there's an empty void behind Atlanta. The moment Kaka signed with them, they were just Kaka. The Kaka City. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, guys, games, uh, first round matchups for Saturday, New England Revolution traveled to Atlanta, 1 p.m. Eastern time, Toronto host DC United, 6 p.m. Eastern time, and then on Sunday, Union Red Bulls in Philadelphia, 3 p.m. Eastern times, and we're, we're going to talk about who the favorite is in the Eastern Conference, and we've kind of narrowed it down to four options. It's either Atlanta, Union, NYCFC, or the field. And who do you got? It's been a conversation on this show for the last several weeks who the best team is in the Eastern Conference. Armand, we'll start with you. Uh, you're setting me up. Uh, I like Atlanta, man. I mean, I know I've ragged on Frank DeBoer for his bad season, his bad start, but they've turned it around, and they look pretty good. And again, I'm scared of this team in the playoffs because they have, you know, that home field advantage at least to the two until the conference final. And I mean, who knows? I mean, I would rather, uh, to be honest with you, avoid facing a Toronto FC than, you know, like I'm not scared of Philadelphia Union. I, I think people know on this pod that I'm not afraid of Union. But a Toronto FC is kind of hot. I'm kind of a little spooked out by them. And I mean, I think Atlanta can potentially, I mean, if NYCFC gets knocked off by a Toronto, can have home field advantage throughout. And I think that, you know, they they know how to win games. And, and the thing that I think we've talked about is they've learned how to defend and then they've combined that with their lethal attack. And I think that's a huge thing. And they can grind out these results. If they're up 1-0 and they need a Seattle result, I think they can do it. However, the Revs, man, uh Arena man, like uh, he's he's a he's an interesting character in, in in all this. But I mean, if I would choose from those four, I'd have to pick Atlanta United. So talking in the green room, guys, we all had Atlanta United as our favorite, or we we give the slight edge to Atlanta. But NYCFC did beat Atlanta four one on September twenty fifth, so close to the playoffs. However, guys, NYCFC have this problem with their stadium. Do you think that that could pull them out of their element, being the top seed, having to almost play themselves in an environment if it happens to be uh, Mets Stadium or whatever they play, uh, whatever the, the it will be. Going? It will be Mets Stadium for the first game. It's City Field. Let's City not, Field. Mets Stadium is a completely different stadium than City Field. Let's let's keep that. Uh... <laughs> what is? But Mets isn't the baseball field a baseball field? Yes, yes, but Met Stadium does not exist anymore. City Field does exist currently. What is was Met Stadium once? It's where, where the, the Mets... Twins? It's where the Twins and the Vikings used to play in like the seventies. Wow, it tells you my sports knowledge there. Anyway, yeah. City Field. Hey, City get to play at City Field. A little ironic twist there, but guys, that has to be a massive advantage to the row team. Or at least cancels out the home field advantage for NYCFC. I mean, for me, I know this might sound a little preposterous, but I think there's something to be said about NYCFC having to go to City Field. And while it is 
a home match, it's under unfamiliar surroundings, if you will. You don't, you, you know, you, you're not familiar with, oh, that's where the clock is in the stadium, or this is where the locker rooms are, or, you know, things of that nature. It, 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 it might feel like a road game of sorts, just because of, uh, like I said, it's not Yankee Stadium for NYCFC. Sure, it's a baseball stadium. I'm sure the dimensions will be smaller, but that's something you have to consider when looking at NYCFC if they are faced with having to play games, quote unquote, home games away from Yankee Stadium. I mean, for me, I think Atlanta might be the best team in the Eastern Conference, or at least the most battle tested team in the Eastern Conference. They made the deep run into the U.S. Open Cup, they won the Campiones Cup. For me, I have to give Atlanta the slight edge. Yeah, 100%. They have the players that have done it. And that's the problem, right? You look at the Eastern Conference. Do you really have faith in NYCFC? No. What about the Philadelphia Union? It's the first time that they're in the playoffs in a long time. So none of the, the top seeds in the Eastern Conference really give you confidence to do it in 90 minutes at home when there's an expectation for them to win. So you, you have a team like Toronto, it seems like they're almost playing with house money. No, you're right. It is. It, it's it's so interesting. And here's the thing. Toronto has actually played NYCFC really well, even at Yankee Stadium. So, look, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of them moving stadiums. I think they'll be fine. Like, look, even the commute for these guys, like, it's going to be a different commute to the games. It's it's a different atmosphere. It sucks to have to do it. I know I did it last year on Decision Day or whatever. But, look, soccer is soccer. You know, dimensions are dimensions. And this definitely gives the second round team a little bit of – is a little bit less of a home field advantage for NYCFC having to play at City Field rather than Yankee Stadium. Question with Atlanta, since we're giving them a slight edge. Anybody worried about finding those spaces behind Atlanta's fullbacks? Because that seems to be quite a bit of a weakness for United. Jake, are you afraid? Uh, I I think I am a little bit. No, I, I don't know. I feel like Frank DeBoer... I, God, I feel like I've done a complete 180 on Frank DeBoer because you would have asked like I have question. To. Totally. If you had asked me something about Frank DeBoer in June, I would have said this guy needs to go. And now I'm about to say, no, I trust Frank DeBoer is going to put Atlanta United in the right position to to win a an important game in the playoffs. So for me, I'm not concerned. Like I said, they 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 they've kind of gone through the gauntlet that was the U.S. Open Cup. They're winning one off games to to advance and lift a trophy there. So for me, I think that Frank DeBoer will will do what he can to help mask those problems. And, and one thing, too, about the Eastern Conference is outside of NYCFC, there's not very many teams that scare me in the East in terms of exploiting. Really? Over, over Toronto? Like, uh, a Toronto doesn't sit I mean, there and go, well. Uh, uh, Toronto should only scare you if Josie Altidore is healthy. If, Jersey, if Josie Altidore is not healthy, then you can write Toronto off. I think you can write I mean, New England Revolution is their attack is basically get the ball to Gustavo Bow and hopefully he scores. And, uh, and, Car- and Carlos Heel, who yeah. wanted to come to here today. Yep. Or we're hey, we're happy for him. Uh, we're happy for him, but you Red know. Bulls, Red Bulls are Red Bulls. They won't win a game. Or I shouldn't say win a game. They won't win an important game. We know that. that. At Union, they're still a little uh, green. A- and, you know, for me, they. I think they pose a threat, but. I don't think they're anything like you see in the Western Conference. They're not a you know Seattle Sounders or an LAFC or an LA Galaxy, even or even the Portland Timbers. And in, in DC United, it's kind of in free fall mode or has been for the last two months. It feels like so for me, it's it's. I think NYCFC is the only team that could probably expose Atlanta. Oh. And I mean Atlanta. Here here's another thing with Atlanta is I mean Jose Martinez is uh, I guess 100 percent healthy, but. It's always risky going to the playoffs just coming off an injury. So who knows what happens if he tweaks something. And then you got Miles Robertson, who's been fantastic all season long. He's also hurt. So injuries could catch up to some of these teams, especially you know when you have star players out. 
Toronto and Atlanta are, are two notables. And the thing with a Robinson is, man, he got hurt during international duty. So they might have to change up their defense and their scheme. Are they going to go with that three back line? Is Parker's going to get more burn? Parker's is a little less mobile than Miles Robinson. I mean, looking through Stephen, you're right. Injury can change things. And, you know, a team like NYCFC, uh, they're healthy. And they're even doing, uh, I actually saw this on Twitter, where they're actually traveling to Chicago to play a, a friendly against the Chicago Fire in order to stay sharp before their game, uh, their next round game. That's so a you have Bill all these... Belichick move right there. So you have what all these... a slap in the face to the Chicago Fire too, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> They're oh. playing at SeatGeek Stadium too, so, so, so it'll be uh, about, it'll be like an actual Chicago Fire game. Then, uh, no yeah, five there. people there. <laughs> hey, it's gonna be like that playoff game from a couple years ago when they lost to uh, Red Bulls. Chicago oh Fire hosting God, the Red that Bulls. Was a disaster. But no, like, you're right. An injury can change the complexion. But I'm going to have to agree with Jake. DC United does not scare me. Benny Ball is just not good enough. It might be able to get him a win. But I, like, a team will expose that, I feel like. You look at uh, you look at a team like Toronto. If Josie Outdoor is healthy, okay, then we're talking. Philadelphia, I mean, remember, I haven't been sold on them all year. And they do good with, through Castor Shiboko. But and he's gonna play. But I, how healthy is he? Is he that healthy? Like we we're, we're not 100 percent sure. And like looking through the rest, the revs are the revs. If Arena gets some upset, whoop de dude, Steven will cry and joy. But I mean, outside of that, like you know, I don't expect him to do much. I mean, looking through that, you're right. The Red Bulls they've looked like a shell of themselves recently with their press. I I, th- I think you're right, Jake. I think we're looking at an NYC Atlanta showdown unless Toronto can you know get uh, healthy and come at come at them. So there's no chance for Philadelphia. Are we completely writing them off? I mean, they should they should beat Red Bulls, but do you yeah, think really fair. think Philly's going to march into Atlanta and and beat Atlanta? No, assuming the, assuming the, the Revolution right, beat Atlanta, but. right, right. But the problem with the Philadelphia Union, sure, they had a successful season, but Red Bulls last year had the most points in the regular season in MLS history. And they they just fail in the playoffs. So it, it, there is this notion that you can have regular season success, but that doesn't always translate in the playoffs for whatever reason. There There is something different about MLS playoffs that some teams have and other teams don't. Red Bulls is one of those that just don't, right? FC Dallas is another team that just don't have it in the playoffs for some reason. When, when the lights get really bright, they tend to crap themselves. Question is, where where does Philadelphia lie on that? Do they not crap themselves, or do they crap themselves? I mean, you have to argue Philadelphia is the most interesting teams, right? Because they beat Atlanta, although it was uh, at home. And they they beat NYCFC, if I remember correctly, right? Like, these are all quality wins. And, well, they also, and they also drew LAFC. Like, they had the results, again, like, all these at home. But it's just like... I'm not 100% sold, you know, on this on on this team, you know, winning. I I don't know what it is. I really I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out in my head because they've shown it, but it just to me it just doesn't seem like that they have the like, the right. The, Armand, the, I don't know what it is, man. Since Philadelphia drew LAFC one one, and we all thought that was a good result, right? They yeah. have they've. The four following games, three losses, and one win versus San Jose. Two of those three losses against Eastern Conference playoff teams. Well, it's better to get it out of the way at then, right, than in, the, in in October. Well, that's one way to spin it. No, I just think Philadelphia, outside of Casper Shabutko, where's the goal scoring going to come from for this team? I mean, I they, guess the guy they, like Sergio Santos. I'm not sure. He's a sub. You're going to rely on a, a super sub to provide or, the goal scorer. Or, or God El Senio. Or else, exactly. You just named two super subs. So I mean, if that's if that's your if that's your magic bullet there, if you're Philadelphia Union, you're going to sub a guy on or two guys on in the 60th or 70th minutes and say, "Okay, go go get me a couple of goals here at the end of the game." Let's go, Chief. I mean, I, I don't know, Philadelphia. I, I think. I think they have a formula there to be successful for the long term, but I just don't think there's enough high-end talent to 
win any uh, meaningful games late in the season and in the playoffs. Yeah, we'll see. Listeners, join us. Join the conversation at Uncle Sam Soccer Pod. Give us your thoughts on Greg Berhalter, the Western Conference from last episode, or the Eastern Conference. Are we wrong? Are we right? We shall see. Guys, let's do some predictions because why not? It's the last minute of the show. It's always fun to come back to these when we have to write our apology letters. Simple, guys. Who makes it out of the Western Conference? Who makes it out of the Eastern Conference? Jake, you got first dibs. Western Conference, I believe last episode I had said LAFC was going to win the Western Conference in the East. I'm going to give it to Atlanta United. So I think we will have MLS's wet dream, which is LAFC, Atlanta United in the MLS Cup playoffs. And do you want my MLS Cup winner? Why not? Atlanta United go back to back. And they Ooh. Hoist, Ooh. hoist Ooh. the MLS Cup. Wow. Armand. Bank of California Stadium. Armand, do so you agree? So I have agree? the Revs and FC Dallas going to the MLS Cup. <laughs> and and FC Dallas, no, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That would be the only way FC Dallas would host MLS Cup, by the that way. That would be great. I'd fly down to Dallas for that. Sweet. I'd be here. Um, no, look, I mean, we've talked about it on the show a lot. I don't see anyone competing with LAFC in the West. Especially at home. I have LAFC, uh, you know, beating the Galaxy in the second round and then beating uh, good old RSL. I think that, 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 that'll that be my take uh, in the Western uh, in the Western Conference. In the East, the East is tough because I do sense an NYCFC Atlanta final. And you know what? I'm going to go against what I said earlier. I think NYCFC knocks off Atlanta and LAFC clinches the, the MLS Cup in uh, LA over NYCFC 3-1. Wait, 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 wait. Who's your winner? LAFC. Oh. Yeah, LAFC is winning the cup. They'll be playing uh yeah, Atlanta in the final. I think we're we're actually going to get the two top seeds. Uh the it just seems to be trending that way just this the way the season has played out. So Listeners, you know the drill. At Unc Sam Soccer Pots, send in your predictions before the playoffs start. Be fun to know. Hit us up at Armanka5. You want some awesome FC Dallas coverage. At Jake Watroba for all the negative takes in sports and just pure sadness when it comes Burr-Alter to. Burr Out Signs. Should I do it? Burr Alter yes. Out. Yes, yes. Let me know. Follows yours truly at Steven Jodderand. We'll be back next week. We'll be talking playoffs. U.S. Men's National Team will get some audio of Greg Berhalter in the press conference. He said plenty. He said lots. Until next time.